So here I am in my lure test facility, which goes by the name of my bathroom. And I've got the tub filled as much as I can. And I'm going to take this uh, lure that we've been making. I put some um, black tape on the back of it because once I get this thing wet, I suspect the black tape may not stick to it. Now, the question is, what's, what's the lure going to do? Now, I think, and you can tell it's still dry yet, I think it's going to sink like this because the, uh, the bill is by far heavier than anything on the lure. So here we go. I have not tried this yet. There we go. So it's a floater. So I'm going to uh, tape a bunch of weights to the back and I'll be right back. So I have the, the large single hooks here as well, but I'm not going to bother taping them on because uh, they weigh 22 grams and I'll just take that amount off of the lid. So let's take a look at the lure now. You can see it's got two big chunks of lead taped onto it and let's see what it does. Okay, so that floats tail first, shouldn't surprise you. Doesn't mean we're done yet. My water is not deep enough to to really show me uh, that it is still in fact sinking because you can't you may not be able to see this but uh, that bill is is kind of sticking out of water by about an inch so I'm going to strap some more lead onto it at the front just to make sure okay so I've got two large pieces of, of lead taped around the front now the the important thing here is the rate at which it sinks so let's try this out again I'll just nose it in the water and notice the front goes down now uh, that's a good thing so I think I'll put a little, a little bit more weight on the front hey I put some more weight on the front let's see what this thing does okay that sinks pretty darn good actually Okay, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try take Okay, now I've reduced the weight. And let's see what happens. Not near as good. Okay. We are ready to split this lure. First thing we have to do, take off the bill. with that bill off if I have been stingy with my glue like I said I was I should be able to put these needle nose pliers in here and it'll act kind of like a wedge and this thing can you hear it crack oh there's another one okay let me go on this side okay it's going to be difficult there we go. Now, since this thing has been underwater, I'm going to let this thing dry for several days. So, I'll get back to you. I'm back in the shop. My two pieces uh, of wood have dried out and now I have to 
uh, decide where I want to take the, the wood out so I can add lead. Um, this is an area here that I think is appropriate. I'm going to stay away from this glue. Remember that when I pour this lead, this uh, uh, bill will be in and glued. And this is about an inch of wood, which I think should give me some pretty good insulation against the, uh, the very hot uh, lead. So I've marked where I want to do my digging on both ones. Uh, as I work on one, I will be uh, digging it to a point where I think I should add lead to it to, to weigh it. And this is the, the lead uh, that I'll add to it. It's ordinary uh, lead from a bird shot um, shell, a shotgun shell. And then what I'll do is I'll add that into the hole, weigh it, and then that will give me an idea of, of how much lead that I'll be adding. Now bear in mind, I'll have two sides of it, so whatever amount of lead I want, I have to divide it by two. Half on one side, half on the other side. Before I start the digging, however, I have a small little gouge here, and I have a stone. And one of the things, I always add water to the stone, and before I start any one of these digging projects, I always sharpen my chisel. It's not a very expensive chisel, it's from a, a small uh, set of uh, chisels that I got uh, years and years ago. It's got pretty good steel, so it's, uh, it works very, very well if you sharpen it. Wicked sharp is what you want. Now, because safety is always a concern, I will always wear a glove on my left hand if that, if I'm digging like this, that chisel is maybe going to get loose and, and jab you in the hand. I have had it happen once, not seriously, but I always wore a glove and I didn't even bleed. So that's, um, wearing a glove is absolutely essential. So I start roughly up here and I just start to dig. Now, there's lots of material here in the wood, so I don't know if I'm going to have to expand this area or not. Uh, that will come, uh, that decision to make it bigger will come later when I start to put lead in there. And I'm, I'm thinking that this will be just fine right here, right now. Um, you don't want to dig out so much wood that your your wall is super thin because I mean that just makes a weak weak lower so you got to use your best judgment here now I'm also keeping the lead as low as I can of course lower the lead the more stable the lower it would be but we don't want it too stable either because uh, these lowers are like a jet fighter you probably have watched YouTube videos on jet fighters and the fact is um, by design they are made to be unstable and in order for these lures to wobble back and forth they also have to be somewhat unstable. Now I'm, I'm working around where the stainless steel wire goes and uh, I always like to have the, uh, the wire surrounded by lead and if you'll notice I have also decided to uh, dig out around the belly loop. Now the whole idea of this is when we put the, uh, our, our belly loop in here there's a part that's going to extend in here and wrap around the stainless steel wire and it's great if you can get some lead on that. Uh, because that's a potential stress point if a, if a wahoo happens to take a lure from the side, which they do from time to time, uh, you can actually uh, put a lot of stress on that loop because he'll hit it this way, which is normally they hit it this way, but they'll hit it this way. And then what you do 
when you feel a bite, your instinct will be to set the hook, and you do not do that. What you do is you point the rod at the wahoo. Now the line in your rod um, will, ha if it's braid, the modern braid, it has no stretch. So that fish will be thrashing around with with only the braid to hold it back, and that's that's ex that's extremely strong. And what happens is he'll slide off that lure and get caught. If if you flex your rod or try to set it, you'll yank it out of his mouth. So the common knowledge is that you point your rod directly at the wahoo. Have I done that? You know what? When a when a wahoo strikes, I get pretty excited. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've done that or not. But everybody on the boat will tell you that, so So I'm getting down a fair bit. Now bear in mind I have to do the same thing on the other side because we want this lead to be equally distributed on the center line. So pretty soon here we'll be uh, putting some lead shot in here and weighing it. Okay, time for a little math lesson. We want to add 150 grams of lead. We know that the wood weighs 100 grams because we've measured that. So the wood weighs 50 grams per side. Now, one of the interesting little tricks, of course, is as you're digging the wood out, it weighs a little bit less, but that's not, that's not that big a deal. So. Each side should have 75 grams of lead in it. So when you add 75 grams of lead and 50 grams of wood, you get 125 grams. So that's kind of what you're looking for. Now, there is also something that I've found that there's a measurement error in this when you add the, the lead shot. and the, the lures tend to wind up heavier after you pour the lead. So, I might get a little bit more. And right now, I think I'm pro pretty much okay with that. So I've scooped out a bunch. I really don't know how much I've scooped out. I have no idea. There's no way you can kind of eyeball this and say, hey, it's about 50 grams. Whenever you do a, a new lure the first time, you've got to kind of, you want to you wanna go light because you can always dig more wood out. So what you do is you fill this guy up. Matter of fact, you overfill him. And what you do then is you, you pack it. And you can get most of the unwanted lead out. One of the things you're trying to do here is to be consistent. And you'll find that when you're patting this, these lead pellets, they kind of compact to a certain point and then, they, then they're done. They, uh, they start popping out and you can say, well, that's probably as, as good as I can get it. So I'm going to uh, move the uh, lead aside for the moment, and I'm going to bring in uh, my scale. Got to zero it here. Okay, and I'm going to weigh this. It's hard not to get a few little pellets bouncing around. So I've got. 99 grams. I don't know if you can read that on the uh, on the camera, but or on the weigh scale rather. So I know that I gotta take some more off. 
Okay, here we are. We're measuring again. And this one turns out to be 125 grams right on. Um, off camera, I also did this other side, and it also was 125 grams. I think I got a little lucky, personally. Plus, they're usually plus or minus two or three grams. And uh, so this part is over. We have dug out all that we need to dig. So the next phase, we're going to be gluing this piece back together again. So uh, I have some special little clamps and I have some wood glue. Now one of the things I like to do is just rough up the insides here because uh, they've been exposed to all kinds of stuff and just a couple seconds worth of sand, sanding will just kind of get rid of any crap and um, so I'll do that and uh, I'll get back to you when I'm actually doing the gluing. So when you're applying glue to this, putting the glue on itself is not so bad. But when you bring the two halves together and put the clamps on, there's glue everywhere. So it's very, very tough to film without getting glue on your hands and getting glue on the camera. So um, I'm going to uh, show you how to put the glue on. And then I'm going to shut off the camera before <laughs> it gets messy. You always want to have a, uh, a complete box of Kleenex uh, or well, some sort of form of tissue to mop up the excess glue um, because it gets messy. Okay, you can see how I've put glue over most of the surfaces. I'm just moving it around with my finger. I'm trying not to get into that, that channel that I cut with a saw way back when. Now you might find you have too much glue in spots and you can take some off. Now this edge is always the one that I worry about because it has got so little material. Someday I will find out a find a way to reinforce that. And I got a lot of glue right here. We have to get rid of some. It doesn't take that much glue. And of course the first thing that happens is you you start to put the thing together and it just squishes out and and you got to mop it up, so you have to have enough glue, but not too much glue. So here's what it looks like clamped up. There's not a lot of room for air when you're doing this clamping. This end has to be dead flush. Now, if this end isn't dead flush, the contour of the top piece will never match the bottom contour. So you got to wiggle it around, get your hands glued, full of glue and and press down. Now, when you're clamping this, this is not like clamping a, a two pieces of oak board together. You're not putting uh, a, a huge, huge amount of force on there to get that, to squeeze that glue out. Um, right around here, this lure is hollow. If you did that, you would just crack it. So you need a steady force. One of the really important things also is after you've done your clamping, of course, you're cleaning up the glue wherever you find it. You've got to clean up inside here because you're going to have, uh, you, you're going to be putting your uh, bill in here. And if you've got lots of bumps and lumps of glue that have dried, uh, that bill will not sit right on this upper face here, the important face. So you've got to get in there with a, with a tissue, well, whatever it takes to get in there. And uh, I just happened to see a, a little bit of glue hiding there, so I'm gonna kinda get him out of there. And uh, in 30 minutes, this guy will be uh, glued. He won't be hard, but he'll be glued. Uh, but I think um, by tomorrow morning, we'll be ready to uh, glue in the bill. That's.